get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a beach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and how they overcome big challenges in life and business, like the founders of P90X, Atari, Quest, uh, Tom Bilyeu talked about how he helped build what is now valued a billion dollar company, and about the story when he broke, he was broke and actually had to convince his father-in-law that he would support his daughter. Um, our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, eight figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out Rise25.com. It's run by myself and co founder John Corcoran. Uh, it's application only. Today, I'm very excited. I have a friend who I also consider a mentor, fantastic entrepreneur, person, father. You know, husband Tony Grubmeyer, he's co-founder of Ship Offers. He built with his two childhood friends, Doug Roberts and Gil Gerstein. Fifteen years later, Ship Offers is an eight-figure business that has been an Inc. 5000 company for the past three years in a row. They ship out over one million orders per year. In 2008, he almost lost it all. Uh, he also runs the podcast, The Tony G Show, bringing together his love for business and self-improvement. Tony, it is an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. Hey, thank you, man. This is uh, just a highlight of my morning and my day. I knew I was going to be interviewed by a good friend of mine. I thought, hey, man, let's roll. I wouldn't be anywhere I am today without, first and foremost, uh, like my God, a higher power, my wife, my wife, my two boys, my mom. I lost my dad two years ago, my sister. Mm, sorry to hear that. I'm an adopted brother. An amazing group of friends. An amazing group of friends. I, I have most of my friends from my childhood. I still keep in contact mm. with them. Um, I literally, as I was leaving my neighborhood today, I knocked on one of my uh, one of my buddy's doors. He, he grew up seven houses down from me in, in Santa Cruz, and he moved here a few years back. And, and I, we live seven houses down from each other. And That's I just wild. opened his door this morning, and he stuck out his hand, and I'm like, no, nah, give me a big hug. I just gave him a hug. I said, I love you, and I, I drove off. Um, I just have a, a sense of just awe about life and, and people. And, and then you, you talk about your two business partners. They're family. You know, they're family. And, yeah. and so I, I love what I get to do. I love that at year 15, I believe, even being an alcoholic saying this, like we're like a bottle of fine wine. We're just getting better with age. We are just literally getting better with age. We are working on building a team. So I don't have to be at every show. I'm sending people now. That's been huge for me this year. The trust, allowing growth to happen. I kind of feel like the, the, the circle of life, it's coming full circle. I'm able now to really plan the next three to five years in my life. My vision's pretty crazy. So I am literally figuring out um, what does that look like, where we're going, and how we're going to get there. Um, and these guys are like, hey, man, let's go for it. Gil and myself yesterday were at something that could literally revolutionize and change our business. I had spent a couple hours with um, some prospective uh, partnerships, and I am literally signing a lease to acquire more space as we speak. If what I believe happens, um, I'm going to tell you guys right here, right now, three and a half years, I'm going to be traveling the world, not because I, I um, need to. It's because I want to, because I want to go and and bring ship offers to the world in a lot of unique ways. It's, I don't want to just be a supplement company. That's what scares my partners a little bit when I start speaking like this. Yeah. So what does that look like? I mean, to give an idea of it's... Fulfillment operations like in uh, the East Coast, West Coast, overseas, having manufacturing made overseas, delivered to uh, companies in the morning, or all the orders split and all the countries get their shipments. Um, I see a little version of a, a mini many ship offers in all these countries where like somebody could acquire it as like a franchise. They could open their own little ship offers like in China or the UK and they have their, their portfolio that we're giving them. And then they're, they're working on building other relationships around them. That's, 
I'm telling like this is my idea. Like yeah. if someone steals it, so so be it. I just believe it. I think that, there's a lot to execute on that. So oh, yeah. Man, it's, yeah. it's a lot. And uh, we built a lot of software and technology behind it. But like right now, we're just focused on one day at a time. You know, one shipment at a time. And uh, yeah, it's amazing. But I, I'm I'm excited. I mean. You're talking about something that wakes me up in the morning. I love coming here. I love incubating ideas and thoughts in my, 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 my rooms. And I, I love talking to the staff and I love getting everybody excited. You know, and I say I'm not a visionary. I think I say that because I don't want to hold myself into a certain light. I just really want to help people today. What, um, you just moved into a new space, right? We outgrew it in like three months. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the biggest space we've ever acquired, literally the, the new paperwork for the space next door that we're going to knock down walls and double. Um, we're literally looking at the paperwork as we speak. So yep. how did you outgrow it so quickly? Got some really amazing marketers. Got some really amazing people working with us on doing some really incredible things. Um, you know, our portfolio... Three years ago was 100% on-demand supplements. So everything we manufactured, we were selling to the customers. They were labeling it today. Our portfolio is diverse. I believe that like in this day and age, the name ship offers, I do not want to be synonymous with supplements. I think that's where it's been. Mm-hmm. And I think what people are realizing is like, mm-hmm. wow, you put out an excellent product and service and you got great people and things look awesome. Would you be interested in this? And, I, and I, I'm really trying to, live with the mindset like yeah. of a mouse pad. Like if it fits like in a mouse pad, like box size, like yes. I ship it all day long. Yeah. And I figured out the sweet spot of what makes fulfillment work. I, I, I can ship 5, 10, 15, 20,000 orders a day. Hmm. Like I literally have created that mindset that we can go do this. We got people, we got systems, and now we need space. And so, uh, yeah, we grew 600% last wow. year. Congratulations. Uh, we kind of evened a little bit this year, a little flat. Um, still, still an amazing year and excited. This has been the year of growth. This is the year that we went from like 10, 12 employees to just under 30. And so a lot of that comes with trials and tribulations and adjustments and trusting and helping and having people work with you. And, um, yeah, no, we're, we're gearing up for an amazing 2017. The, the, the pre-orders, the numbers that are sitting on the calendar, it's, it's going to be a, just an amazing year. And I think really, that's why I can't get too far ahead of myself. I got to get present with you that I woke up today with a grateful little attitude and mindset. And that's why the addictive mindset, which is like forecasting too far out, I got to remember that I have to get present. And that's what helps me throughout the day is because I can, I can almost see like what three years looks like today, but I can't go there today. I got to go I, where I'm at right here, right now with mm-hmm. you. That's the only thing that matters too, by the way, which is an interesting point. I use this as my centering mechanism. Jeremy, you're the only thing that matters to me right now in my life because you're the only thing that I can actually participate in. Right. Everything else, all the distractions, all the people, my kid, and his monitor going off, my wife where she's at, my son in school. Like I have no control over that. I just have control over you and me right now having a conversation. Right. Tell me a bit about – you mentioned gum, which that you, <laughs> I'm going back to this because – what are some other products that are interesting that you've shipped? I just, that for some I reason got my creative mind space. flowing. What's I've that? I've got a lot of guys in the survival space. Yeah. Like, I think when you, uh, tinctures, I've seen people sell lipsticks, chapstick, gum has always been interesting. It was like weight loss gum. And I'm like, you can barely put anything in it, but like if you chew enough of it, I guess that saliva builds up and you're not as hungry. But I think the reverse the psychology, I'd just get hungrier if I was chewing gum all the time. <laughs> um, I think from from the things that are people doing now, which is you know coffee cups that have weight loss properties in them with their coffee and right. the creamers. Um, I think I mean selling hats and everything. But I think at the end of the day, I think. I want to find products that add value to somebody's life. I don't want to see – it's really hard, right? Marketers are awesome. They know, they know how to make money. What can we do to change the world? That yeah. – when I sit down and I actually start talking about like what's hot, what's next, what's new, my, I've shifted a little bit. Yeah. yeah, I want to make money, of course. But what, what could we do to change the world? Yeah. Right. So that's – So what do you think? What well, products – 
I think it goes back to how I chaired the meeting this morning. It's how I think I live my life, which is hope. I think that we are, we are the change. Gandhi, Gandhi instilled that to me a long time ago, be the change you wish to see in this world. I think it starts with us. I don't think it starts with the next you know, cup of Starbucks. But I do think that it's the gateway to, to be of service and to help others. And that's why I do what I do. You know, From the cup of gratitude that I've been offering up for people, it's where I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Will you share it with somebody? Those are the little things that I can do. The, you know, pushing in a shopping cart when I go to the grocery store. People go, why are you pushing in somebody else's shopping cart? Well, I kind of believe what my sponsor helped me to see. Is like, uh, and I just was with my sales staff this morning saying this one thing, and I think this is really just impactful. What are you bringing to the table today? If you lined up everybody you knew and you said, hey, there's a line, go get in line. How many of your friends and family members would go into the kitchen instead of getting in line to, make, you know, to just eat food, right? Because we're, we're hoarders in a lot of ways. We just go and we just serve, 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 and we eat more and more and more and our plate's over full and we just go, oh, God, I got to get more and more and more and more. And next thing you know, it's like, well, who's making the food? I'm like living in that world right now. I'm wanting to go, go over there. I think that's where change has always been. And I want to live over there. I want to help get more people over to that side. What are you bringing to the table today? So when I see a shopping cart at a grocery store out of place, I just push it back. People go, why are you doing that? Help that guy. He's already got enough to do. Look around. There's millions of shopping carts sitting around in this parking lot. So I start thinking like, what can I do? What small little random act of kindness, what can I do? If it's buying somebody a cup of coffee, it's pushing a shopping cart. If it's to stay late, come early. If it's to pick up trash, if it's to close a door, if it's to say please and thank you, to hold the door when people won't even say anything, but you keep holding the door because you know, as Jim Rohn always says, there's really only you know nine or 10 miserable people in this world. They just seem to move around a lot, right? It keeps me laughing, but it keeps me going forward that I know that the change that I seek in the world begins with me nowhere else doesn't matter about the president. It doesn't matter about who won the championship. It doesn't matter about anything other than what change can I bring to my life today and the lives yeah. of the people around me? What, what am I bringing to the table today? Yeah. You mentioned earlier, Tony, about the team growing so much. Um, what kind of team does it take to run ship offers? <laughs> it takes a lot of hope, a lot of faith, and a lot of people who wake up ready to make a difference. It's hard. Like when you grow that quickly, what are you hiring for at that point? I I hire for character, first and foremost. Your resume is just a bunch of BS. Sorry, don't mean to be offensive, but it's making you look amazing. So I'm actually in the process of hiring uh, an assistant right now. And I found just a LinkedIn article for hiring a rock star assistant. Gentleman's Darius. I don't know his last name. And I'm literally using the framework right now. And the response has been overwhelming, incredible. People are saying, like, I don't even want to apply for the job. Well, I do want to apply. What's the framework? Like, what are you what are you doing? Well, I'm trying to find an executive assistant. No, I mean, you said there's a framework that you're... Oh, yeah. So basically what it is, is it says, it describes you and everything about you. So the person reading it, like, oh, that's totally me. And then it says, if this sounds like you, I need you to do these three things, which is email me, write a PDF cover letter, PDF resume, and send it in. Then I literally take it, and if you follow through, I, I respond back with, here's the next five steps. Here's the, like, here's the next five steps. And so funny is, is that so many people think, oh, that's totally me, and they write all this great fluff. And the bottom line is, is they don't care. They didn't read. They only need a paycheck because that's just what they need, and I'm not, I'm not putting anybody down. But the problem is, is most people don't see everything through. They just see an ounce. They go, oh, I got it. Did you see that it said, please hit email, reply with PDF, not a Microsoft Word document, not a text document, not an explanation document, a PDF. And then when they say, hey, send it to me, then I send them the outline. I don't even show them the price. I don't tell them anything until they actually do work. Because I realized today everybody is after something. 
And so now I've created with a system, I've, I've modified just a hair, but I, I believe it, it works. Then they'll go, sure, send me, send me project number one. So project number one is basically I'm traveling from this location to that location. And I leave on this date. You need to be good with this because you said in your, you know, the, the beginning of the, the ad that you need to be good with like travel. So I literally give them everything. And then they hand me back my, my flight schedule and they tell me where I'm going, the hotel I'm staying, who's picking me up, the meetings, because I've given them a little bit of that guideline. And then it just goes on from there. And so now I've done phone interviews now uh, tomorrow and uh, I'm meeting face to face. So it's, it's been an interesting process. I've, I've received probably 30 applications out of 30, probably 15 followed through out of 15, probably seven said yes. So now I'm in the process of interviewing seven. But I've actually got excited about the hiring process. Well, why? Because I'm hiring for what? Character and culture. Of course, being one of the, the main guys in the company, I want to make sure that the, the new blood coming to this company gels with the rest of us. Mm-hmm. How you do know, you so, find all these people oh, to apply? I, so warehouse is easy. You go ask warehouse workers. You say, hey, guys, do you have anybody that thinks like you, works like you? And another thing is I have found the most talented people. They're ex-employees of Walmart, Target, companies that either grew too fast and, you know, didn't do it. And I literally just love on my, on my team. I literally, that's like one of the secrets that I would tell anybody today. Like, hey, how do you build a successful team? Love on them more than you maybe love on yourself. People just really need to be loved. And so treat them all the time to food and just thank yous. And at Christmas time, I, I get excited and I don't put on a Santa suit, but I hand out gift cards for random things that they do at any time. I'm just like, thanks. And people don't expect it. They just appreciate it. And I think when you just walk up to a, an employee or a team member and you say, thanks, you make a difference in this organization, they have a sense of pride. And so by doing so, then they feel confident enough that they could go ask their friend who maybe just lost their job. Like, hey, my boss, my company, you know, needs a new employee. Would you be interested in coming meeting? So we go through that process. So our hiring process is more like, who do you know that would be interesting? Who would be a good fit for here? The one policy we have is um, no significant others, no spouses. You can't. So if you work here, you can't have your spouse come in. You know, it just, it just won't work. The chemistry I think would get thrown off. Yeah. Tony G, this has been amazing. Um, I, so appreciate you and and thank you for the time and expertise. I have one last question. Um, uh, before I ask it, let's point people towards shipoffers.com and tonygshow.com, right? Um, anywhere else we should point people towards. Those are the two, two main ones. Um, you know, I was watching a video, your about video the other day. And... Um, I think it was towards the end, you held up a piece of paper and there was highlighting on it. And one of the things that you talked about was goals that scare you, right? So I'm, I was wondering some of those things now. And I don't remember the logistics. You, you talked about there was an orange highlighting and yellow highlighting for certain reasons. I don't know yeah. if you want to talk about that, but you make a list of things and then you also... The, the framework around it to help yeah, the audience? Yeah, yeah. So... A good buddy of mine, Kevin Cohen, shared a piece of advice that he got from somebody, which was uh, drainers and drivers. Yeah. You know, you literally just draw like a T on a page and at the top of it on the left, you write drainers. On the right, you write drivers. And as you go about your day, your week, your month, every time you do something, it doesn't matter what it is. You just write down what it is and does it drain you or drive you? And then I have people on the other side of that page Write down everything that's happened, good or bad, in the last 90 days. Good or bad. You know, I got a parking ticket. You know, I ran out of gas. Good thing is I saw a friend's baby be born. Blah, blah. Just write it all down. So, like, just as much as you can actually commit to. Take the highlighter. Like, I used today. We did. We had four colors today. So, I'm colorblind, but I can see these. So, yellow, orange, pink, and blue. And everything that's good in your life that happened in the last 90 days Highlight an orange energy, highlight an orange. And then everything that happened that was like something, something bad. And some people say like, what's your, your, your definition of bad? It's just something that didn't make you feel good, but it happened. Right. So like it could be somebody died, right? Like it, it doesn't make you feel good. You're very sad. Right. Um, and pick 
pick a color that works for you. So just for this, this example, use pink. We said, now the very, very bottom of that page, I want you to now, after everything's highlighted, the page is full, I want you to write um, good. So I want you to write good and then give a little space and write bad for the time being. Now I want you to go count everything that's good that happened in the last 90 days. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, you get 30 of them or 50 of them or 100 of them and you put them in the good category. And then the bad, you put all the stuff that happened in the bad and you put it on the bad. Now I want you to get out a calculator really, really quick and I want you to take 90 divided by how many bad things happened to you and give me the number. So for the average person, it's like one in every four days, something bad happens. Now you're aware that like you're not going to have a perfect week, but you're aware of it. It doesn't mean that you can't overcome it. It just means, bam. So now take the calculator, calculate 90, but divide it by all the things that are good in the last 90 days. And it tells you like you're having something good happen to you every day, mm -hmm. every other day. So what are you celebrating in your life? The stuff that isn't working or the stuff that is? And it, it really just in that moment helps people to switch and pivot from a negative mindset to a, gra a grateful mindset and literally say like, man, there's so much good going on in my life. Turn off the news, go outside, meet a complete stranger, get on a plane ride and spend 30 minutes getting honest. Like do good for the world around you and watch the things around you change. I mean, the exercise is really just another way of getting you to look at getting present and honest in your life. Mm -hmm. And I do it all the time. I mean, my staff and I, we were doing something this morning. Like I posted a thing on my Facebook wall last night. I asked my friends and family, I said, what's my biggest strength and my greatest weakness? Hmm. What, what did you, what, what surprised now, you? It, what they said. A couple of the things that really, uh, one of our mutual friends, Vinny Fisher, I know you, you had him on as a guest. Yeah. Um, you know, I think some of it is like I have had some hurt and some of that stuff that I've dealt with like in my past, like still shows up in other areas of my life. Like I've overcome a lot and I know I've hurt a lot of people. So like he was able to read through that. And that's what's cool is like I have friends today in my life who will call me out on my you know what. And then I got a lot of friends who like, you're a great guy. And I'm like, that's awesome and all. But I actually am asking because I learn from the therapy that I'm getting, right? right. It's not like I, I don't need you to sugarcoat me an answer. Right. I need you to tell me the truth. Right. Because if you're honest with me, that's going to enable me to be honest with others. And, and I've said this many times, and I, I always leave it on podcasts when I get interviewed, is that I believe asking for help is not a sign of weakness, but a sign of greatness. Mm. I believe when we actually are empowered to raise our hand, because we learn through education that it's okay to, to raise your hand when you have a question, but later in life, we forget that. We put our hands behind our back. We got this thing figured out called life. The biggest lesson I ever learned is when I was literally about to commit suicide and that phone rang, I did not call for help. Hmm. Man, someone reached out for help and, and literally changed they my They asked mind. help from you. Yeah, my buddy came and, um, yeah, I mean, it... it it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing when I talk about anything in my life, the, the greatest joy is to be able to be present with you today. That's the greatest joy. It's, it's the, the experience that I'm almost missed out on because I took my life. Hmm. It's the greatest joy. I try anybody you could ask anybody in my life. I think that Tony tries too hard. I think that's what would be a common theme. Tony still tries too hard. He extends himself too much. I only sleep five hours a night. I think those are all great things for me to, you know, keep in my mind. Like, hey, you know what? Why do you do that? Oh, you spent a lifetime trying to look good to avoid looking bad. Oh, so you still have some of that old mentality. I'm just working on being a better version today than I was yesterday. That's it. So a lot of what I think I'm a part of and what I'm doing in my life is really simply saying, what can I do today to learn more about me from other people? Not that I care about what your opinion of me is, but I definitely value your opinion in the state that I asked for it. Right, right. I don't need you to give me your opinion, but if I'm asking for it, right. and we're, in, we're, we're having a, a very connected conversation, I want you to be honest. I want you to tell me. You know, we just finished one of the craziest political uh, elections that I've been a part of, and, and I tell you what, yeah, people have an opinion People have an opinion. So I'm asking for people's <laughs> opinion and I'm okay with what they say right. because I'm learning more about me and I'm learning about, man, I can make a difference today. Yeah. I'm, I'm inspired by these answers. And uh, I, I was writing back saying thanks, you know, some good perspective. 
Any final parting words, lessons, anything we should leave people with? Uh, obviously, we've left them with a lot at this point. I could, I could go on for another four hours Strong on one of these topics. Are, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, yeah, man. Be your word. Be your word. Work every single day at being your word. Uh, when you mess up, clean up your mess. I love Jim's line. Don't leave him in the mess. Like, just be your word. And I think the more that you can work on being your word, the more you'll honor and love and yourself. That'll help you to go and see the world as an amazing place that we get to do some of the most amazing things. Um, but it all goes back to being my word. And my commitment to others is to help people today. That's my commitment. Um, that's why... I'm grateful for this opportunity to share a little bit of the craziness, a little bit of the all over the place ping pong ball, Tony Grebmeyer. Um, I'm grateful that we've been able to build, I believe a friendship still love the man crate. Um, <laughs> what, what I believe is that I think there's so much good in this world. And I think that we have the opportunity today to, to be the change we wish to see in this world. And that starts with me. It doesn't start with anybody else. It starts with me. It starts with me being my word, my commitment around why I got up today. I ask people a lot of the times, I said, why did you get up today? I don't want the sugar-coated version. Why did you get up today? Dan Shell writes, says, contribution. I want to go contribute. I'm going to go make a difference. I want to go do something today that's never been done before. Tony's never lived this day before. Jeremy's never lived this day before. That's big enough for me. It's yeah. a great start. And so I just want to go out and, and I, I want to be my word and be the change. Yeah. Tony, I want to be the first one. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. No, I love you, man. Yeah. I, I sincerely mean it. I think that we, we lose focus sometimes. We lose focus, uh, and we need people to help remind us of why we do what we do. And you have been a constant. I, I tell you, out of all the people that I get to work with, um, you have made some of the most amazing intros of people in my life as a super connector, which I, I like to say I'm, I'm really good at connecting. My, my partner said, hey, what's on your plate today? I said, oh, I'm doing an amazing interview with Jeremy. It's going to be awesome. Oh, the guy with glasses, the guy who introduces us to everybody. I'm like, yeah, that guy's like, oh, wow. he's awesome. So that's the contribution that you have. It's not just Thank you. me. My partners recognize it. It's, oh. it's a guy from Chicago. He, he's good. He's, he's got a, a podcast show. That's the contribution you're making in my life is that you make a difference. So oh. I just want to say thanks back at you. Yeah, you're very welcome, and you make it easy, so thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. 